Hello, you wonderful people. So for today's video, I want to talk about Iron Fist and the MCU. Just kind of a conversation. And I know this is a conversation that has, I've heard a few people kind of weigh in over, you know, over the years of like, right, obviously with the conversation on the Netflix stuff, what's canon, what's not canon, obviously with Daredevil Born Again, the conversations have been obviously about Jessica, Luke, and Danny, and obviously uh, Frank. Uh, about where they're going to stand in all of this. Will it just be Daredevil? What's going to be canon? What's not going to be canon? Stuff like that. So in today's video, I want to kind of talk about what I, I think would be interesting if they were to do the Iron Fist in the MCU. Because I think that's going to be an interesting conversation all on its own too because, well, they have Shang-Chi, so maybe they'll feel like, well, Shang-Chi, we don't really need to go the Iron Fist route. Uh, someone had suggested it before, and I think it would be interesting if we did kind of, well, for one, get a collab between both of those characters or maybe even kind of pit them against each other for a little bit, you know, them not knowing kind of each other's circumstances and they're kind of enemies but eventually allies type of thing so the Iron Fist conversation like I said is a very interesting one because I know Finn Jones has talked about it uh the actor who played uh Danny in the Netflix show um and I also know uh Jessica Henwick uh who played Colleen that conversation has come back up about like either one of them returning because obviously if you've seen Iron Fist Danny gets the Iron Fist back at the end of season two but at a good chunk of that, obviously, Colleen ends up with the Iron Fist. He kind of bequeaths it to her because he feels like she is more deserving of it. So that's a whole conversation in itself. If you were to continue the uh, continuity, first and foremost, what would you want to do in that situation? Would you want to bring back uh, Jessica Henwick as Colleen to be the MCU Iron Fist going forward and, you know, maybe keep Danny ambiguously out there in the universe or just kind of like, no, we're ignoring the Danny thing. Colleen's our Iron Fist, so on and so forth. That's just it. Um, would you want to bring them both back to kind of be a dual Iron Fist thing? Because um, I know a lot of people did not like the Netflix Iron Fist show. I did. I am super in the minority net with that, and that's okay. I know it did not resonate with everyone. It did for me. I liked season one, and I really, really liked season two. And that's why there's certain elements of that show I would love to bring back. Um, but I also acknowledge I'm not someone who is well-versed in Iron Fist from before in the comics, nor where the character currently is. We'll kind of get into that in a little bit, but, um, well, well, we can talk about it now. Obviously, like, I believe in the more recent years in the comics, once again, I'm not well versed. I don't know whether it is, like, more recent years or is it, like, a super, super recent thing, but I believe in the comics they've moved away from Danny, maybe, or maybe it is Danny, but Danny isn't the white character he's always been for most of the iteration of that character. It is now an Asian character, and I don't know which route they've gone where they've gone, like, it is a full blown, like, Chinese, uh, um, character that's grown up in China or is it like a Chinese American because I think those are very interesting perspectives either way you go um I think the Chinese American route could really lend itself very nicely to a Danny Rand story if you wanted to do the Danny Rand thing but in um the MCU I believe you could especially if you go like a Chinese American route where it's like hey this character like Yes, they are Chinese and they're American, but they've kind of lost touch with their roots. So when they do land in Kalan, like from the plane accident that kills their parents, they are still kind of getting that culture shock because it's something, it's a part of their culture they don't know. And so you can still get some of those elements of Danny's story, even with like an Asian American uh, uh, character or actor playing the role. So I think that'd be interesting, like either rather, like you want it to uh, just full blown like recast like Danny and start fresh completely. If you were to kind of reboot it like that, I still feel like whether you wanted, like I said, just have a fresh, fresh start or you take this kind of rebooted version of the character and kind of mingle that in with a Colleen situation. Or like I said, if you just wanted to continue that starting fresh with Colleen being the Iron Fist, I think you could still kind of do a very similar storyline in that regard. So I think that'd be a very uh, uh, interesting, uh, 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 I think a really good approach to it. Like uh, that way you kind of get both people when you get Jessica Henwood back and you know probably get like a fresher take on the character coming from this perspective like the iron fist being hers from the very beginning once again it just depends on whether you want to continue continuity or whether you want to completely start fresh that that would, that would be the whole thing but my thing is like say like we don't have to we don't want to reboot well i think this stuff could still be applicable even if, if you want it to go like the colleen route or just a new iron fist route the elements that i would want to continue once again i'm someone that's not well versed in the character but these are elements i liked for the uh, Netflix show that maybe people would feel like aren't applicable anymore. Danny in season one was extremely angry. It was a culmination of, hey, your parents died in this uh, 
airplane accident, the fact that you find yourself in this mysterious place, went through all the training he went through, then eventually, you know, years later, comes back home and was kind of rejected by the Meachums. He wasn't as welcome open armly, and they even kind of schemed behind his back to kind of take everything. So it's like, yes, he had a whole bunch of unresolved anger issues, and I love the whole aspect of he got the Iron Fist because he thought it would fix him, because he was broken in so many ways, and he thought, like, getting the Iron Fist would fix him, but it didn't. It didn't work the way he thought it would. It, it, even the whole trial to get the Iron Fist, he was, when he was talking to Davos, he was like, it's not what I thought it was. It just wasn't. And I think that it can still be extrapolated once again to like, just, it, it didn't fill that hole in him. It didn't make him any less angry. It didn't make him any less broken. So I think an element like that would be really, really interesting to kind of continue. Like I said, whether it is like reworking of Colleen to fit like that, or maybe even like a new Iron Fist uh, filling that void. I mean, fill, filling that role, but also another angle to me was like the season two side of things. Matt had asked him at the end of Defenders, hey, I need you to protect my city when I'm not able to. And for Danny, he, you know, everything he did in season two was kind of an in service to that, but not really. It was the whole thing of like, right, we're going to stop all these bad guys. It's good versus evil. I'm trying to do the right thing. But even he later on admits... I wasn't doing this for the right reasons. I was looking for any and every excuse to light up the Iron Fist. That's really why I was starting these fights. I want to justify it by being like, oh yeah, I'm just trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to do what Matt asked me to do. I'm trying to keep this city clean. I have this power. I have this responsibility. But it's like, no, he felt good using this power. And I think it still stems from some of the stuff from season one. He was broken on the inside. And it's like literally having all this power literally at the palm of your hand, it felt good and like having that iron fist and not being in the right mindset that's why he felt like no i wasn't i'm not uh i'm not um the person that should have this right now and that's why he eventually gives it to colleen because of that and i think that's such a that dynamic of like a hero struggle of yes i have this power but do i know how to properly use it i think that would be i think that's such a compelling storyline Th those are elements that really work for me and maybe it, it, it didn't come across that same way for other people but that's what i really like i mean an antithesis of that is when i believe it was like in season two when they were fighting the hatchet man they're just do, like you know him and colleen just doing their thing no powers or anything like that on danny's part until the very end of the fight out of nowhere danny lights up the iron fist and Colleen had to stop and was like, what are you doing? It's like, we're fighting regular people. Hitting someone directly, unless they're Luke Cage, hitting someone directly with the Iron Fist is a bad, bad decision. So it, it, it kind of works in that department as well. So it's it, it, that kind of feeds into the point I was making. So to me, what I think of, I think would be kind of a neat amalgamation. Like if you took certain aspects of Shang-Chi and mixed it with Killmonger, I think that'd make a really interesting Iron Fist because you take... You know, Shang-Chi could be like a little bit of an inverse while also a direct parallel. And maybe because of those parallels, maybe that's why they don't they wouldn't want to do an Iron Fist because they already have Shang-Chi. But the whole element of right, Shang-Chi was given like 10 years, you know, his dad was like, yo, do whatever you want to. Uh, 10 years later, his dad was like, yo, it's time for you to become my successor. And he didn't want that. Obviously for Danny, it's like, yo, I was here like, at, uh, you know, my parents died and I'm angry. And eventually I have to come back to like outside of Colon, kind of return to like everyday society and kind of find some balance then and there. Like, I think that's, you take that. And then also like, because he lost his parents, like, like I brought up the anger before that was Killmonger. Killmonger was just such a young person that was angry and was kind of lashing out yes he had his justifications for but he was still angry the same thing for danny it's like, i lost my parents i have every right to be angry but it's a question of what do you do with that anger do you keep it bottled up inside which danny kind of did a lot was bottle it up and didn't really deal with his issues instead he just bottled it up and he ended up kind of lashing out and like losing control a lot, which with the Iron Fist, it's all about control. And once again, finding that equilibrium. And I think that just that whole story, that aspect of things, I think could really, really work for like, you know, an MCU um, Iron Fist. But once again, I am someone who is not well versed enough in the comics to know like, well, the, the is what was the original Danny Rand like in the comics? And what is this new Iron Fist like personality wise? Because other than the Marvel show, my only other instances are a little bit here and there of like Iron Fist and some video games. But other than that, it's like the ultimate Spider-Man animated series where, uh, uh, Danny is like super very like hippie-ish. He's very like namaste, cool, even kiltered, you know? 
uh, it, which obviously there's layers to that because he's voiced by Greg Sipes. Which Greg Sipes has that very like cool, laid back voice. You know, obviously one of the things Greg Sipes voiced is uh, Beast Boy in the original Teen Titans cartoon as well as in Teen Titans Go. But he was also Kevin E. Levin from the Ben 10 series, specifically the older Kevin from like Ben 10, Alien Force on and such. So, but like his Greg Sipes voice naturally fits like a very even kilter version of that character in Ultimate Spider-Man. But I don't know if that's more traditional to what Iron Fist has ever been in the comics or is that like a very different version just like the Netflix version was a very different version. I mean, obviously, this all leads to me also wanting, like, I have talked about it before, I love a Heroes for Hire, like, regardless of how people felt about it, once again, I really like Mike Coulter and Finn Jones's, uh, you know, Luke Cage and Iron Fist dynamic. It was a, one of, I think it was, at, once a episode 10 of season two of Luke Cage, one of my favorite episodes was, like, their team-up episode. It was basically a backdoor pilot for, like, Heroes for Hire, so, even if we never get a direct, like, Iron Fist, like, in that, you know, I, I feel like the best way to do like an Iron Fist thing, whatever whatever the case may be, whatever iteration they'd go about it, would be a Heroes for Hire thing, whether that be with Mike Coulter again, which obviously he's doing evil and maybe he probably isn't as interested having to be in that type of shape again, or whether you got to kind of recast uh, Power Man slash uh, uh, Luke Cage. So, I don't know. Obviously, like I say, these are just kind of my thoughts i'd love to get to know yours in the comments down below whether you're kind of a newbie at all of this like me who's still not well versed in the character some thoughts you have on what the character's circumstances could be in the mcu would even want any version of iron fist in the mcu whether it's on the street level kind of like they were doing on netflix or would you want him to be on a bigger scale kind of like a shang chi um would you want once again would you want uh, Jessica Henwick back as Colleen? Would you want her to be like a rebooted version of the character or the same uh, exact character from the same continuity? Obviously, just all the points I brought up, I'd love to know your thoughts, things that you agree with, disagree with, your own thoughts about things. Just let me know. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.